positive cues from Wall Street. The Dow rallies the most in over a month. Chip designer Arm jumps 25% in its first day of trading on the Nasdaq. Wholesale inflation in August rises 0.7%, the biggest monthly gain since June of 2022. European shares rally after the European Central Bank raises rates to a record level. The stock 600 jumps over 1%, while the British FTSE gains close to 2%. The ECB indicates further rate hikes may be off the table for now. Stocks in the Asia-Pacific open mix following a strong handover from the U.S. and European markets and ahead of key economic data from China. The GIF Nifty suggests a positive open for the Indian market. And oil extend, extends its rally. U.S. crude tops $90 a barrel for the first time since November of 2022. On expectations of tight supply, Brent crude now trades above $94 a barrel. Good morning and welcome to Power Breakfast. I'm Pavitra Parekh. Those are the top headlines that we have for you this morning. There's a lot that's come through in terms of the handover and it is positive after a few days. So that's definitely looking quite supportive. We got that good move in the US markets, but Asia has pulled back a little bit after a good open. What's not doing so well this morning in the Asian markets, you have Hong Kong, which is uh, absolutely flat. It's come off a lot from the high. So that's just around 26 points in the green right now. And you have the Taiwanese index on your screen. It's not too much of a cut at all, just around 13 points lower there. But we're seeing a little bit of a red tick over there. The Shanghai market's also trading just mildly lower, not too much at all, but a little bit in the red. And what's holding up and doing very well in trade this morning is definitely the Japanese market. So the Nikkei market is up over 1%, 1.1% to be precise there. You also have the Kospi, which is trading well. So that's nine tenths of a percent in the green. So looking quite, uh, you know, mixed as far as Asia goes. The GIF Nifty will come up for you. It is indicating that the open for our own markets will be in the green once again. So around 54 points higher is where we're at in terms of the implied open. But with that, let's also talk about the U.S. market because like I was pointing out, Wall Street ended higher on Thursday. So the Dow was up for the first time in three days and we saw a move of over 330 points. So that looked extremely solid, almost one whole percent there. And this is actually the best day that we've seen for the Dow in over a month. If you look at the S&P 500 and the Nasdaq, both of those did well as well, around eight tenths of a percent higher. Uh, on the S&P 500, so that was good. Now, another, you know, big move that we saw in the U.S. market was that shares of chip designer Arm surged 25% following its debut on the Nasdaq. So that one uh, started off things very strong. Meanwhile, if you look at the key data that really came through from the U.S., which is the wholesale inflation uh, print, this is for the month of August, that did come in hotter than expected. So that was, uh, you know, around 0.7% higher for the month of August. Even producer prices, in fact, saw their biggest monthly gain that we've seen since June of last year, June of 2022. However, if you look at it, excluding food and energy, core prices rose just 0.2%, which is uh, pretty much in line with what was expected there on the street as well. So that's what uh, we're tracking in terms of the U.S. market action as well as some key data. But on that note, let's listen in to Gabriela Santos of J.P. Morgan Asset Management talking about the market valuations as well as the recent gain that we've been seeing in the equity market. Since May, we've had more participation from cyclicals as the data has shifted the narrative much more towards a soft landing. It has been surprising that even though we've seen a backup in real rates, close to 200 basis points, we haven't seen a bigger correction in long duration stocks. We've seen some, but we haven't seen as big of a correction as we would have expected, given naturally would lead to more of a focus on valuations. And we know uh, the largest of those stocks are quite extended when it comes to valuation. All right, that is an important word coming in, but we have some more opinion for you. Here is what Steve Waiting of City Global Wealth Management Investments has to say about trade data, as well as the recent employment trends that came through, the big macros that the markets have been tracking. Listen in. It looks like a deceleration. You know, three years ago, we had an absolute depression in services employment. And services employment rarely falls very much, even in recessions. Right, very steady. And so to get all of that back is actually helping a lot. It's actually working through some of the problems we have in the goods sector. We have uh, manufacturing recessions, trade recessions, and we're getting inventories down because of this persistent strength in services hiring. 
now the whole thing is growing half as fast as it did a year ago, and it doesn't just stop there. Mm -hmm. It'll probably continue to decelerate with some of these headwinds, uh, but it's getting us to a place where we just are not going to have that collapse that happens when you have a, a full-blown, uh, you know, drop in employment of serious magnitude. <coughs> All right, that is an important word coming in. But with that, let's move on to the final update in our global market wrap today. Uh, now, we had European markets also, which ended Thursday's trading session higher following the ECB decision to hike rates by 25 basis points. So if you look at it, the French CAC index was up over 1%. The DAX also closed uh, very well. So it was around 150 points higher at the close, same around 1% higher there. And the British FTSE rallied close to 2%. So all in all, a very strong close across the European markets. Now, the ECB raised rates to a record level. Rates have risen from minus 0.5% in June 2022 to an all-time high of 4 percent now as well. So we have CNBC Steve Leesman who's with us to get us all of the details and also what the European Central Bank's Bank uh, really indicated in terms of what they could do going forward. The European Central Bank raising interest rates by a quarter point, bringing up its benchmark rate to four and a half from, uh, uh, from, four, and, from four and a quarter, but suggesting that perhaps it's done, saying that based on its current assessment, they may have reached a level that is sufficiently restrictive. This was a toss-up, folks. This was a, It was unclear what the ECB was going to do. There were polls that show, uh, surveys of economists showing it was a 50-50. The market was like a 60% possibility of a rate hike. Uh, so it could have gone either way. In that sense, it's kind of like a visit from the ghost of the U.S. monetary policy future, where we go in not next week, where everybody's pretty sure the Fed's not going to do anything, but in November, uh, it's sort of a 50-50, 40-60 split in terms of not hiking. Um, and, and then the question becomes, with the ECB doing more and having a sl slower growth in Europe, as well as in Japan and China, whether that allows the Fed to do less here. But the ECB surprising folks, doing an, a quarter point, uh, which was really uncertain. Maybe they hinted at it yesterday. There was a report that the inflation re forecast was higher. And also in Jackson Hole, Lagarde laid down a kind of hawkish comment at the very end of her speech, which wasn't about monetary policy, but she kind of inserted that. So maybe we were on notice, but the market was 50-50, guys, which is kind of unusual going into any major monetary policy decision here. All right, Steve, thanks a lot for getting us all of those details. In fact, Steve was just alluding to what ECB President Christine Lagarde had to say. So let's listen in to some of those highlights as well. Based on our current assessment, so it is based on all the data, the numbers, the analysis, the assessment, the projections, and, and any other information that we have available, we consider that the key ECB interest rates have reached levels, OK, note levels, that maintained for sufficient long duration, so there is the time element that comes up, will make a substantial contribution, substantial contribution, those are heavy words, to the timely return of inflation to our target. And that, we don't stop here. We, the, the whole paragraph is important and needs to be read in, in symbiosis. So the next sentence says, our future decisions will ensure that the key ECB rates will be set at Repeating, sufficiently restrictive level, that's number one. For as long as necessary, number two. Those are the really two parameters that are going to guide us very much. Not that we are forgetting about the three components that have guided our uh, reasoning uh, so far, but, and we continue. We will continue to follow a data-dependent approach. You've heard that before. Data-dependent approach to determining the appropriate level and duration of restrictions. All right, that is the word coming in from ECB President Christine Lagarde. All of the European markets up and about in trade, like we pointed out, and they ended with very strong gains. By the way, since we're talking about the you know global picture, I just want to point out that China's retail uh, sales data is out. That is coming at 4.6%, so a growth of 4.6% in August. What we saw in July was much lower. It was just at 2.5%, so there's been a significant pickup there. In fact, this is also well above what was expected. So the number that our poll sort of had was around 3% 
in terms of the growth that we could see for August, that has now come in at 4.6%. So I just thought I'll highlight that. The Chinese markets are, um, are actually still in the red right now, just around 0.1% in the red, but that is what uh, we're tracking in terms of the key data that came through. With that, we're going to get into a short break. We've gone through the entire global setup. So the, on the other side, we're going to talk about all of the domestic queues and some of the stocks that you should track as well before the market opens.
Welcome back. You're still tuned into Power Breakfast here on CNBC TV 18. Now we've gone through the entire global uh, setup that we have for us this morning. So let's talk about the domestic queues as well. We have Reema and Surbi joining us to really prep us up for this trading session. Guys, a very good morning to both of you. Reema, let me come to you first. After that close above that 20,100 mark yesterday, looks like once again the start will definitely be in the green. Uh, the start is got likely to be in the green, 50 points higher, as the gift nifty is currently suggesting. But yesterday, you know, the um, indices gave up uh, from the early session highs. So they were largely consolidating. Maybe they spent some more time before inching higher. The action is going to be in the broader market because yesterday was a solid session for our markets. The mid and the small cap universe rallied more than a percent at the index level. And yet these indices are still not at the levels that they were. Um, you know, in terms of Monday's close, before the Tuesday, you know, manic selling took place. Uh, so the mid-cap index is about 1.7% away from that level. The small-cap index is still about 2.5% away, which is why week to date, these indices are still under pressure. Global markets are largely upbeat, but keep your eye on the two macro headwinds. One, Brent crude prices above $94 per barrel and the dollar index, which is closed above 105. In terms of the flows, the DII's net sold 50 crore in the cash market, while the FI's net bought 295 crore. Back to you. All right, Reema, thanks a lot for getting us all of those cues. Let's also talk about the individual stocks that we should track. And Surbhi is here with that entire list. Hi, Surbhi. Hi, Pavitra. So the first one on my list is Bharat Forge. Now, the company and its unit, Kalyani Strategic Systems, signed a pact to produce armoured vehicles in India for a global client, Paramount. Next is Infosys. They've signed an MOU with a global company to provide enhanced digital experiences. The total client target spent over 15 years is $1.5 billion. MedPlus IT department is conducting a survey at one of its subsidiaries. We'll keep an eye out on that. Sequence Scientific, the board approves the sale of company's API manufacturing facility, which is situated in Thane. GMM Fordler, the company has acquired professional mixing equipment MixPro for $7 million. Patel Engineering, in a joint venture, has been declared the lowest bidder for a 250 crore irrigation project. Patel Engineering share in this project is 100 odd crores. CRM Silk, the company's buyback price has been increased from 650 rupees per share to 720 rupees per share. All right, Surbi, thanks a lot for taking us through that entire list of stocks. With that, it is time for a short break. But on the other side, we're tracking all of the commodity market actions. Like we were pointing out, crude is above $94 a barrel now. So we're going to tell you why when we come back.
Welcome back. You're still tuned into Power Breakfast. We were just were talking about the fact that there's been a big move in the commodity space as well. So Manisha joins us to fill us in with all of the action. Manisha, we're over $94 a barrel on crude. What is the kind of gain that we've seen this week? Oh, absolutely, Pavitra. Every single day we've spoken about crude oil prices with further gains holding and continuing on the higher side. So it's a 10-month highs right now. Prices are headed for a third weekly gain. We are up by more than 3% for the week and it, you still have today's trading though day yet to go on. Apart from that, there is very strong hedge fund buying that the markets are looking at. It is going to be about the deficit that the street is working with for the fourth quarter and strong demand growth expectations for 2024 as well. With 94 already on cards, the street believes that 9,500, there are uh, expectations and projections until 104, 107 as well coming in before this year ends. Though the markets believe that this is going to be a spike, prices perhaps will not sustain because India and U.S. are headed for elections next year. So there will be a lot of rhetoric and uh, moves and conversations coming in for crude very soon. All right, Manisha, thanks a lot for getting us all of that action on crude for now, over $94 a barrel on Brent. But with that, it is time for us to take your leave in this edition of Power Breakfast. Thanks a lot for tuning in. We have Bazaar Morning Call after this short break.